match. So we're loaded into game number two. As, uh, yeah, this guy, Aryam in the top left. He totally had to go do something, apparently. He's like 16, 15. He's feeling like 15 years, 15 years old. So basically, he has a, his parental problems or whatever. So we'll have to see what he's got in store for game number two with Intense as they are down 0-1 in this best of three. The winning team here will qualify for the 2v2 Team Cup Kappa Star League Extravaganza being played out next week. And they're facing off against Lilbo and a Marine Lord. Marine Lord, a.k.a. If you guys have been tuning into the Fragbite Masters, which I've been in here in Sweden commentating, if you guys have been here to me into Muslim talk, Marine Lord up as one of the up-and-coming potentials to eventually be the top foreign Terran. Although, of course, he has a long way to go to topple Bunny, who uh, knocked him to the lower bracket in the Fragbite Masters. Actually, no, that was Happy. Never mind. Well, anyway, who's doing better than him in that tournament? You get, you get my point. You get what I'm saying here. Uh, intense. Hmm. Gas first. We're going to see a fast factory play out of him. All right. I can dig it. I can dig it. And Arium is going to go for a little gas. Still that... Mm, doesn't seem like the gateway was as late as he usually gets it. So maybe he wants to go for a quick stargate. Whereas Lildo is following suit. He's not doing anything particularly feisty himself. We have, what, four probes mining gas here. And six. So Lilbo's going straight for that gas. He really wants that gas. Actually, Arium's now on six as well. So important things to keep in mind. It's a Reaper opening from Marine Lord. And very fast factory out of Intense. And this build, man, from the last game, I'm still just so blown away thinking about how look preparing for this tournament like that's everybody's gonna have to worry about that like any protoss you can do like you can you know it's it's pretty sick it's pretty sick like you have like this these feed builds are pretty awesome but it's a part of 2v2 and i think that's like a unique a very unique aspect that um yeah i'm like actually okay with it like i feel like that's something that is probably banned in other tournaments or maybe like people have thought about banning it but I actually think that it's uh, it's opened the door for some really weird stuff. Like, if there's a Protoss on the other team, you need to scout and make sure that the Zerg or Terran are actually building tech. And then you just prepare accordingly, right? Because you know it'll be mass stalkers. And both players sacrifice a bit of economy, but they're still ahead. Or, or you know, a bit of their army production by getting that um, static defense. But then they're still okay. At least in my opinion. So Really cool to think about all the cool stuff that we're going to get out of the group stage. Because you'll have multiple opportunities to play against the same team since we're playing it as a five best of threes, basically, when we move on GSL style. It's a Stargate opening from both Protoss players, and they're both going to open up with Phoenix. Oh, this, this Reaper got caught for a second, and I think this Hellion from Intense should be able to uh, finish him off. Oh, no. No, he's not going to get him. Wow. He's slipping by like uh, like butter. Whee! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to be able to get away with that. Marine Lords and Reaper, not going to die today. And it's just Phoenix from Lilbo so far. I think that's uh, the staple opening now for Protoss in 2v2. I don't think there's anything better. Yeah, Arian's also going into Phoenix with three gateways. I mean, you'd know if these rocks were getting worked on, so you're getting those gateways to defend against drop play, right? It's a pretty late starport out of Marine Lord, whereas the met first Medivac should be finishing very, very soon for Intense. I like that Arium has a Phoenix patrolling in both bases just in case a late Oracle pops up. So let's see what he can do with this. Is he going to just drop the mine? Yeah, he's going to drop a mine, two Hellions, and two Marines. It's a very weak, 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 weak push. But it has a lot of... Exp it has a very, very high burst damage potential to kill uh, probes or, you know, I guess, or SCVs in this instance. Terran Protoss games seem pretty weird, to be honest. The Zerg Protoss games seem to be a little bit more straightforward. But Arium's going to use these... Oh, I love this. There's no missile turret. The Phoenix are going to support this drop. And since they don't see it coming, he could actually lift up the Hellions while his Hellions move in and kill the Marines. Or he could just go for the Marines himself. But, oh, I feel like Arium is... He's... Oh, okay, he, he executed this too slowly. Lilbo is going to be able to move his Phoenix up to prevent this from even being a thing. Look at that. It's like a infested bunker of some kind. It's pretty sick. That looks like a queen, a brood war queen attached to that bunker, now that I think about it. With those tendrils. Huh. Anyway, this uh, Reaper gets picked up at the Phoenix over here outside Arium's base, and Gold Base being taken by Lobo. Expanding straight away there. While, meanwhile, Intense starts his command center pretty late. So, economy, 
greatly favoring the French players. They've got their expansion significantly faster, and the Protoss, of course, has this gold, but can this drop finally get something done? Well, now there's a Widow, now there's a missile turret, so what's this Widowmine gonna kill realistically? An SCV. And the rest of this doesn't seem like it's got too much potential either. Um, gets another SCV. And the Vikings are gonna kill the Medivac, so we shouldn't forget too much well working here. Phoenix versus Phoenix battle. Oh no, going in favor of the Protoss. It's never good. And by the, the, the Protoss, Kappa. The blue Protoss. Because Phoenix moves so fast. So he actually does end up killing another Marine or two. So what did he, what, what was lost? Let's look at the resources lost had. Yeah, definitely favoring the blue team significantly in this early stage of the game. But Intense has the tanks. He's got some Marines out. You could try to get to work on these rocks. Um, the best part about the Phoenix is that they just never, they don't care about any of the terrain on these maps. Like this map is absolutely massive. Like this map is huge. So it goes without saying that having units that are fast enough to traverse those maps is definitely a, a boon, a boon to your uh, to your success. Aryan's adding on a second Stargate, tucked away. Has Lilbo added on anything else? No, he just has that one Stargate. He's adding on a few more gates, but now he doesn't see the second Stargate. Token overcharge is activated. He doesn't know about the second one. Very, very important. As if he continues to build Phoenix off of one Stargate, eventually Arium's double Phoenix production will allow him to overwhelm him in the overall Phoenix count. And then we all know what happens once you have the Phoenix lead in 2v2, or I guess PvP in general, after a Phoenix war. Um, but Marine Lord's actually going to go for a mech style this game. He's going to go mech, which interesting. Let's say what we use. Hmm. Four Hellion drop is going to be his push. I mean, mech on this map, I guess it's really huge, right? We have so much space to cover from potential drops. I guess Widow Mines can help with that. The Phoenix, I guess, I guess, you know, why are you worrying about drops when your teammates got Phoenix, right? That's like the whole point of this game now. Lobo's going double forge. He's adding on another Stargate. He's adding on um, plus one Phoenix range. And Arium. But he's going double Phoenix production right now. So he was behind on Phoenixes, but he's catching up very quickly thanks to the second Stargate. Uh, ooh, here we go. Hellion drop with the Phoenix moves, and he's just going to come in here and try to deny. But oh, Aryan moves in. Now, point defense zone, actually. Aryan should want to fight by his own units, but now he's going to lose most of his Phoenix. A bit unfortunate. Takes a couple of good trades, though. But um, yeah, he ends up just. Yeah, he actually lost like two, two three more Phoenix. So what's it? Actually, six first to seven with this bastard second Stargate. It all ends up being even at the end of the day. I would really like to see uh, Intense repair. Repair the Phoenix. I don't know if you guys know that, but you can actually repair your teammates' um, mech units in, in 2v2. Because the Phoenix is mechanical. And SCVs can fix mechanical units. Pretty badass. Pretty badass. So let's see, Lilbo's taking the other gold base, continuing to just expand down. And Intense is gonna be going for a big drop, supported by the Raven and the Phoenix. And I think this Raven is so much more important than you usually see in two versus two. And by that I mean, it's more important than you normally see in 2v2 because you can use it for things like Phoenix battles. Like this, denying the first volley of Phoenix way of Phoenix volleys from Lilbo is huge. The only thing I think that I would really like to have seen here was some repair action, because some of these Phoenix could uh, could use a bit of a fixer-upper. Although Phoenix are expensive, so I guess repairing them is quite expensive too. Now Lilbo, this drop is coming in on his base. The Phoenix are picking up the probes. The tanks are going to siege up here, and he just immediately cancels that Nexus. He knows he cannot save that. And Arium, let's see, how many Phoenix? 10 versus like, ooh, this, he's definitely behind on the Phoenix count. And I, I that actually does worry me a little bit since we have Vikings showing up too, which will definitely keep things in his favor. I love how Marine Lord is just like watching the rocky area. Like he, he knows, and he's got this sensor tower to see if anything comes here. But, oh, the Vikings and Phoenix show up. He forces him back. Oh, he's gonna siege low ground here. Oh boy, oh, no vision. Intense is gonna lose his tank. And these Phoenix with plus one. Plus one Phoenix versus none. Plus one Phoenix. Oh, he just wrecks in that fight. That Raven, totally useless. Oh my god. Like, Lobo will never lose a fight like this with this many Phoenix. Oh. This really worries me now. The time warps the Marines. The Hellions are going to be able to move in. They're all lined up. The Phoenix pick every last unit up into the air. And those plus one Phoenix. The Mothership Corps even has plus one because of that. That is... That's dank. Another drop is going to go to the right side, but... Missile turrets are in position. Marine Lord is ready to do battle. 
He's gonna try to catch this and see if he can just shut it down as Lobo moves all of his Phoenix out again. Here we go, four Medivacs for Intense. Four Medivac Arenos pushing in. Oh, there's the first boost. And to the left, to the left, Medivac's move. He drops his units out. He's going to stand at the same time. Phoenix are going back to counter harass. Look at the Marines. But, um, damn. Okay, so Intense is really starting to get some work done over here. But he definitely needs to because Marine Lord has a massive supply advantage. The Vikings are going to kill all the Medivacs off the tanks. Going to town. There's just way too many siege tanks. But he does trade out for a few. You know, Marauders are much cheaper than tanks, so... Gotta give credit where credit is due. He's made a little bit of it. Losing SCVs is not the end of the world when you're playing mech, but these Phoenix, like, I don't know how Arium ever intends to win. Like, he's, he's gotta the, the Phoenix battle because that upgrade advantage from Lilbo is just so nice. I think he even has Phoenix range. Like, yeah, okay, both players have Phoenix range. But yeah, he can actually get plus two Phoenix weapons whenever he wants. I think, yeah, Arium's Phoenix just get absolutely shrecked. Oh, boy. These Phoenix are just so disgusting for Lilbo. The thing is, normally you just counterattack someone who builds lots of Phoenix, but in 2v2, the maps are very big. You have these rocks, so you can't. You can't counterattack against this. You just sit there and the Phoenix just ravage you. The Marine gets insurrect. Probe, wrecked. Well, Lilbo's building three Phoenix at a time, and now he's starting to add photon cannons to supplement all of his bases. I'm, I mean, the supply tells the story. Arium is at 65 supply. Intense is at 92, Marine Lord's at 140, and Lilbo's at 110. So, respectively, 30 supply up against their both of their counterparts in this game. Intense is throwing out another drop, but now we have Hellbad drops coming in from Marine Lord and Arium. Oh man, you know, this could, I, I have a feeling this could just turn into a, a 2 0. Um, a bunch of Phoenix are flying over here, but. There's not even that many Marines. Like, he could just pick up all these Marines and kill them all. No joke. Hellback Rock is going to come in. At the same time, this drop does land in the bottom position. He's going to try to pick up this Nexus at the gold base. And maybe if he focuses it down, he can kill it. Oh, the Hellions. Oh, they don't have Blue Flame. That's a bit of a mistake. So, yeah, he definitely kills that. Seven Hellions being made at once by Marine Lord. As uh, this base, he finally cleans up the Hellback Drop. Picks up those Marauders and those plus one Phoenixes. Well, plus two on the way now. Oh boy, and look at this. Already the transition into Sky Terran is coming out of Marine Lord Raven Production, Corvid Reactor. He's got everything he needs. And I think Phoenix versus Phoenix with Point Defense Drone, like, it's Ogre. The fact that Arium is still trying to build Phoenix just shows. He's going for Phoenix. He's going for Phoenix armor now. I don't know how I feel about that. These Phoenix is running. I can't believe. How many does he have? 26 Phoenix. It's pretty sick. Gnarly. But now they're gonna have another Phoenix battle with the Marines. I guess that gives an advantage a little bit to uh, to the red team since the Marine DPS is just insane. I don't actually know if Marine DPS is higher than Phoenix versus Light units. They're pretty high for both of them. But a uh, bunch of Hellions now. He does have Blue Flame this time, or at least it's yeah, it's finishing. Yeah, so he's gonna have Blue Flame, and that means that SCVs probes. They're all uh, all on all for fire sale here. And now he's going to move over. He wants to break down these rocks, I guess. But he has to come back and defend. Oh, turn him into Hellbats to kill these next. He's very, very smart. And yeah, there's a bunch of cannons to defend against this. But he still kills off most of the probes that Arian has with the skull days. Phoenix. Okay, they're finally doing something useful. These Hellbats? No, they're not going to kill them. Nah. They're all going to get lifted up. And wrecked. Okay, so Mothership is on the way for Lilbo. And Lilbo and Marine Lord have taken basically every base on the southwest side of the map. And there's the ping basically saying, yep, go kill him. Go kill him right now. As uh, I guess maybe he knew there were a couple Vikings here. But yeah, he's going to be able to go grab him. Grab him and nab him and tag him and shag him. Plus three air attack for these Phoenixes on the way. And he's also starting to switch into Tempests. Something that can actually kill his opponent. And look at this turret ring. Just, you're not going to be able to drop me ever. Like, Marine Lord and Lobo just have this game in the palm of their hands. They're, they're, they're practically toying with them. Intense has managed to reach 145 supply. Like, he's getting somewhere with this. I just don't know if he's getting to a place where he's going to be able to carry Arium, who's been just been too injured. Like, Arium just took too much damage at the start of this game. Straight up, just took too much damage. And now the Tempest transition just means that he's going to be able to eventually slow push the hell out of him with Mech. Mech 
So Siege Tank, Viking, Raven, Tempest. With Phoenix. It's just, I feel like it's just too much. Arium has that plus one armor now for his Phoenix, but I don't think that negates plus two. Fusion Core on the way, so we might even see Battle Cruisers this game. And yeah, well, are they gonna move in now? The Mothership is done. Cloaked Siege Tanks. Cloaked Siege Tank, boys. Oh, shit. Here we go. He scans. He's like, yes, I'm building a lot of command centers. A lot of them. A lot of command centers. There's so many resources on this map. Why wouldn't you? Intense is going to load up one more big drop. Supported by these Phoenix. But as soon as it shows up, like... Oh, no. Uh, as soon as he gets seen by this. As soon as they go into that watchtower range. He's going to try to skirt around the edge as much as he can. But there's a... Look how many missile turrets there are! He can't break this! Oh no, it's a massacre! Everything getting absolutely destroyed instantly. Intense's drop gets maybe two medevacs worth out onto the map, and then a hundred Hellions are gonna run over to clean this up with the Phoenix, picking up all these units. He does drop in on the left side too, but uh, Intense just lost his whole entire army. Yeah, the Tempest is starting to fire and let loose, and I think that's going to pretty much tell him, hey, you've got nothing that can deal with this. He's scanning, he's looking, and the Tempest, they're coming, man. Plus three attack Tempests are making their way down the map now for Lilbo as these tanks push. There's no, you can't stop this. I think this is going to be it. They're going to try to end it right here, right now. Intense positioning himself on the left side. Arium on the right. And, uh, yeah, man, that's just a bunch of health bars, isn't it? All right, well, I don't think we're going to need health bars for this fight as he starts to poke away. And uh, here we go. Point of Fence Drone does get soaked up. Moving the tanks forward. They're all going to siege in these close units. He has to scan to reveal them in the Phoenix, and it's still, still going at it. It's an insane number of Phoenix with a plus three upgrades. The Viking and Tempest support. He's going to win this air battle. He's going to win it, and he's going to win it hard. I don't think I've ever casted a fight like that, and that's it. GG is called... And we're going to have a victory for the French boys winning 2-0 in the final semifinal here of the, T of the, uh, the Ting 2v2.